Hi everyone, I'm Cornelius from Quant Investing and thank you for tuning to my YouTube channel. We live in a period of great uncertainty due to the coronavirus pandemic, but we have lost loved ones and are striving every day to keep safe. I really do hope you're keeping safe. Such uncertainty is reflected in the markets where the money we have invested is also facing market equivalent uncertainty and volatility. So in this tutorial, I'll be sharing with you how market volatility can impact your portfolio during uncertain times, the ways to protect your portfolio against further volatility, and how you can benefit from any growth opportunities the market may offer to boost your portfolio returns. This video builds on my previous videos on simple rules for successful investing, so you will have a comprehensive guide on how to invest in both good and bad times alike. History suggests that every once in a while, Markets and investors panic for various different reasons, such as global pandemics that we're facing now, US-China trade war, US elections coming through soon, Brexit, to name a few. And the recent events connected to the coronavirus outbreak are just the latest manifestation of another risk called market volatility, which in simple terms measures the ups and the downs of the market, usually the US market as captured by the US S&P 500 index. So in essence, volatility measures how much of a roller coaster ride an investment gives you. The main index which measures volatility in the US is called the VIX index or the fear gauge as it's called for investors, as you can see from the trend since 1986. For context, most of the time, this index is somewhere in the range of between 10 or 20 index points. But at the start of the COVID lockdowns in March 2020, this measure spiked to above 80 index points, which was significant. And that was a jump of nearly 25 index points in just one day alone. And it goes to explain how nervous investors were in the market, which was reflected in this VIX index. So consequently, the S&P 500 was down by more than 37% from its peak at the time. And as you can see in the chart, but the key thing to note is that while markets do panic regularly, they also rebound when the panic fades or if there is market optimism. So if you hold any stocks in your portfolio which have not recovered yet, you should be asking yourself why they haven't recovered or whether they still have a place in your portfolio. The shares may now be cheap, but there's a good chance they will even remain so or even get cheaper unless they can demonstrate a business model which can be adapted to the post new COVID era. So how can an investor protect themselves against market volatility? Investors can certainly protect themselves against volatility through asset diversification, which is one of the few saving graces for investors to potentially reduce their risk and losses against such market uncertainties. And this really means having a mixture of stocks, bonds, properties, and other asset classes to reduce your risk across the different assets. And the assumption here is that each will behave in a somewhat different way, reflecting to the market dynamics and price trends, and spread out the risk over time. So anyone fully invested in stocks and shares will be more exposed to market volatility and losses if they are not considered creating a well-diversified portfolio. In comparison, if you have a good proportion of your assets and bonds, your performance may be much better on a relative basis. But having said that, even though shares and stocks would have been badly hit this year, diversification can still be achieved with an only equities portfolio where the shares are spread across different industries and geographies. So the only adjustments worth making in times of crisis that we face right this moment are ones to ensure that you have a diversified portfolio to help spread your risk. And so in moments like this, the natural home for money in times of crisis are either US government bonds or defensive sectors such as beverages, pharmaceuticals and utilities, or other asset classes such as gold and cash. We'll now take a deeper dive into these asset classes to see how you can access them and what else you could be doing to protect your portfolio and ensure that you're set up to benefit from any growth opportunities the market may offer. The first consideration is to get exposure to gold. And this is either through an exchange traded fund or the physical assets. Gold is a relatively scarce resource and has always been a long-term solid safe haven and a good way for investors to protect themselves against inflation or currency movements. It has for a long time been one of the more dependable places to invest during market crisis moments. And this explains why the demand for gold has 
always jump during crisis and whether it's trouble such as COVID or any other crisis. In fact, gold has actually hit an all-time high in the last few months to over $2,000 per ounce over the last few months. As increasing numbers of nervous investors look for a safe place to put their money amid a worsening economic outlook from the coronavirus pandemic. There are a number of ways in which investors can choose to be, get exposure to gold and this include first a fiscal gold ETF and this is really backed by fiscal gold where the investment product allows investors to track the price of gold without the need for any insurance or storage requirements separately. And some examples of uh, such ETFs are iShares Fiscal Gold, which is run by BlackRock and has returned over 28% year to date and has an ongoing charge of 0.19%. Another alternative is SBDR Gold Shares ETF, which is one of the cheapest on the market with an annual charge of 0.1% and run by the American ETF giant State Street. This ETF has actually accumulated over $80 billion of investors' money in 2020 alone and owns over 1,200 tons of gold. I mean, to put this in perspective, this is more than four times the amount of gold held by the Bank of England and almost double the amount of gold held by the Bank of Japan. So huge demand, huge rush by investors into holding the fiscal asset gold. Another option is by buying gold bars or coins, which enables investors to own fiscal gold metal or by buying shares in gold mining companies. However, the key thing to note here is that the company's share price may not directly track the price of gold. And as such, you will not have any exposure to the fiscal metal itself. The next consideration is to buy a strategic bond fund. Historically, bonds have provided investors with some protection during periods of falling share prices. This is due to central bank actions to loosen monetary policy and lower short-term interest rates during recessions. A better option is to look at strategic bond funds because these generally have a more flexible mandate to search out for opportunities across global sovereign bonds, which are bonds issued by countries, as well as invest in corporate bonds, which are bonds issued by companies. And effectively, the risk of the portfolio can be dealt up or down according to the perceived opportunities and the risk appetite from yourself as a retail investor. And there are several opportunities within your investment platform so you can choose whatever works best for your specific objectives or risk appetite. Another consideration is to buy inflation protected products or high quality focused assets with economic modes. One of the best ways to protect your portfolio is to hold quality funds or companies with loads of free cash flow and high returns on capital employed. Safe havens have always been quality defensive growth stocks such as the likes of Walmart, Costco's, Johnson & Johnson, Unilever, Odiagio and many more which are seen as having good earnings visibility, good cash flow generation and in theory are not susceptible to business cycles. So while quality stocks don't tend to be cheap, there is a reason they perform really well over the long term. Typically, they are companies delivering a product or service for which there is significant and continuous growing demand. These companies should also enjoy strong barriers to entry and generate loads of cash flows to reinvest into the business, build a cash buffer for tough times, and also to be able to return cash to shareholders through dividends. By the way, if you're getting value from this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below and let me know if you've got any questions you may have at the moment. And also let me know in the comment section what measures you've taken to protect your portfolio during this crisis moment. And I really appreciate that. The next consideration is to hold cash in your portfolio. One simple thing every investor should consider beyond finding specific safe havens or long-term winners is to build a pot of cash which can be used to buy into the future dips of the market or future opportunities which the market presents during uncertain periods like now. A minimum cash levels of say between 0 to 5% of your portfolio will give you an edge, even though some people tend to hold more. And one way to achieve this is by selling off stocks which are not fixed for the future as a starting point to raise some funds in your portfolio. And if the recent COVID sell-off was any guide to go by, then random selling created loads of opportunities to buy high quality investments at knockdown prices. So cash is king 
to hold in your portfolio for the right moment. Equally, you shouldn't be buying into the momentum enjoyed by every perceived coronavirus winner. So whether it's some pharma stock which has been involved in developing a COVID vaccine testing which may have jumped up by say over 500 percent on certain days or another technology stock which is surge and ipo you just need to be aware of such glamour stocks you need to be aware and be very careful of being attracted by short-term performances you want to typically have a look at the situation over three five seven ten or even twenty year periods to get a real sense of where to place your risk of high-end cash do not tend to chase the hype from the markets or one day performances. And to be able to smooth up the ups and downs, you should consider making regular investments with your available cash, say monthly rather than lump sums. And this can be done through dollar or pound cost averaging. And this really means you're buying more shares when prices fall because a fixed regular saving of say $100 will buy you more shares when the price falls and less when the price is high. If dollar cost averaging is new to you, please check out my previous videos from the info card above or from the description section below as I cover them there in a lot more detail. The next consideration is to hold some dividend paying stocks into your portfolio. Focusing on shares that pay dividends is also a good idea as you can use the dividend income to buy even more shares when they are cheaper and continuously compound your returns. This is key because they are also a key part of your total return you get from shares and even more so when you continuously reinvest them. My only word of caution here is that you need to ensure that your dividend paying stocks have got good levels of dividend cover and sustainable cash flows to weather the storm and keep paying your dividends. The COVID pandemic has been a good test of this theory to shine the torch on the real dividend payers. So for example, the biggest dividend payers in the FTSE 100 index in the UK were from financial services and oil and gas sectors. But the impact of COVID on their business models has meant that dividends have either been scrapped, cut or delayed, which has left investors to seek new havens in the more reliable consumer goods sector, which have lower dividend yields. So next up is to align your time horizon to your investment objectives. So if you say your investment objective is to, is to build wealth for your pension or to buy a house, which is a time bound objective, you might need to access your investment within the next two or five years. So in this case, investing solely in riskier equities and shares, which can go up or down with great regularity, might not be the best strategy for you. So if you pick the wrong years to invest, you might lose as much as 50% of your capital and then only have a short period of time to recover that loss. You need to remember that if markets fall by say 50% in one year and you invested $1,000 at the beginning, you'll be left with $500 at the bottom. And if the market were to rebound by another 50% from that bottom, you'll still have only $750 after that rebound. And by contrast, if your time horizon was say longer, say 10 or 20 years, you should easily be able to survive maybe one or even two outbreaks of market mayhem and still be in the game to benefit from multiple rebounds over that long-term period. So what really matters here is your time window and that is how long your investment horizon is, what your objectives are and your choice of assets accordingly. But starting your investment journey as early as possible will give you a good chance to be able to ride the market storms and survive over the long term. So ultimately, the best guidance is to remain calm, don't overreact to events, stay invested, and simply ride out the market ups and downs. Because anyone who sold equities in panic when the market sold up at the start of the COVID pandemic in March would have crystallized significant losses ahead of an extremely rapid recovery for much of the market, which happened quickly thereafter. So take a long-term view and don't check your portfolio values on a daily or weekly basis as that could only worry you and influence you to make the wrong decisions. So here we go with the six ways to protect your portfolio against market volatility and how to benefit from any growth opportunities the markets can provide to boost your portfolio returns. I hope you found them useful and will be applying them to make a difference to your portfolio going forward because we expect the crisis to last for a while. Coming up next will be my videos on current markets and some trend investing strategies which you can leverage from to make money for your portfolio. So please subscribe to my channel and press the buzzer to be notified when I release the videos. And if you have any questions about what we've spoken about in this video, please let me know in the comments below. 
and I'll be certainly responding to that. And also, equally let me know what measures you've taken or are considering in addition to what we've spoken about to protect your portfolio during this crisis moment. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you and watch out for the next video. Thank you.